Yeah, g'day, heathers and gentlemen, and welcome back to this old lathe channel, where I've been working on restoring this beautiful old 125 CNC lathe from Shoblin. If you're seeing my videos for the first time, you might want to go back and have a look at the playlist on this, because this is like episode 37 or so, 39. Right, let's install the cross slide. If I'm going to assemble this cross slide, I better go and find all the parts. I better make sure I've actually got everything. Gib strip, drive belt housing. Isn't this a beautiful casting? Look at this. Zero inclusions, nicely finished all over. Well, almost all over. There's two sides that got painted. They sure knew how to do nice castings. There's the bearing block with a pair of angular contact bearings. The ball screw. We've got a pulley. The pulley's clutch components. And belt. Support bearings for the other end of the ball screw. And a cover plate. And some way wipers. Those pants aren't going back in here. Now before we get started, last week's video, I was having a problem with these Hall Effect sensors. And you guys gave me a lot of very good troubleshooting advice. The 7i84 card has two banks of I.O. Let's call them bank A and bank B. And bank B is powered here and bank A is powered here. You can have any voltage between 5 and 28 volts on a bank, but bank B also powers the main circuitry of the card and it needs at least eight volts. So I've just checked it. This power B, which powers this bank, is 28 volt. So I connected all my switches into the wrong bank. So this is my five volt bank of input and outputs. These two need to be 24 volts, so I'll need to switch them over to here and also relabel their wires. Now that I've moved the switch outputs onto their correct bank, let's see if it works. On, off, on, off. All right, now the second one. On, off. And there's a CXE. Cool. So all of the switches are working and the Mesa can read them out. It was just as simple as moving that one connector across. Thanks everyone for their inputs. Kind of embarrassing that I didn't work that out for myself. I thought I'd tried that and I guess I got confused between which is A and which is B. There were some suggestions last week about replacing these proximity sensors, which are Hall Effect, with some more modern standardized industrial sensors. But the cool thing about this is the way they've They've been molded to go into these pockets. I kind of like that. I don't want to change it. This is such an elegant solution. I prefer to keep it. It looks like they've just cast the Hall Effect sensors into epoxy in that form. So I'm guessing that there's probably not an off the shelf part, but something Shoblin did in house. Yeah, I don't have a torque wrench that goes down that low. Now before I get any further with the reassembly, I want to make sure that those magnets that are set into the Shoblin's cross slide and bed are going to trigger those end stops. Right, that's set up now. Let's see what happens. We move out to the X plus stop. Okay, that goes on, off, on, off, that's looking good. Let's go down to the X minus. Okay, that's triggering. Oh, nice. And let's have a look at the one on the Z slide.
Okay, that's triggering. That's good. It's pretty conservative on the travel because it triggers here. After the end stop triggers, the bed would allow an extra five centimeters, even more, over two bananas of travel before it actually hits a physical stop. So that's kind of conservative. I must say there is some temptation to treat that bed stop as a home switch and put a couple of proximity switches or even micro switches onto the bed as actual e-stop switches, both forward and rear. Any ideas how the headstock end stop is done on a modern CNC lathe? Do they have sort of a, a variable end stop block that you're supposed to reset each time you move your chuck? Or do they only protect the final physical movement where the saddle would hit the headstock? If any of you have got a modern CNC lathe, I'd be curious to see how that actually works. Add a comment, please. Let's get back to reassembly. The bearing block goes on the belt housing. The one thing I find really weird is there are four screws which mount the bearing block to the housing, but there's also two screws going backwards, and I'm not sure what they were for. You can't possibly have an Allen key on the back here tight, mounting something, but also an Allen key on the front on this side. This plate mounts from this side, it's got those holes, but I really don't know what these two holes are for. Maybe I better go back and look at my old video. Well, I went back, had a look at the video. I can't understand it. I don't see any need for them, so let's put it together and I can pull it apart again if I need to. On the z-axis, this clutch had little ball bearings between the spring and the plunger, which was speculated to add further preload to increase the clutch breakout force. And I think that's correct, because there are none on this axis. Those pins act in the detents of the ball screw drive sleeve. Hey guys, what have I done with the star washer and the nut for the end of the ball screw? It's not with the rest of the parts. Aha, there we go. You know, an aircraft, in this case a Falcon business jet, I've always been fascinated how the different manufacturers of parts approach problems differently, like from this beautiful machining of the radar uh, mounts to a completely different welded sort of bodged up linkage to actually open the radome. Or like here where Rockwell Collins just soft soldered a copper tube to jumper an unused antenna cable. Oh wait, cross slide has to be pushed in from the end but hits against the, the screw. So I think I assembled this too early. The slide has to go on before the screw.
I always have a bit of an issue with tightening gibs. On the one hand, it would seem like the best way to do it would be to put in the gib and tighten it before the ball screw goes in. So then you can adjust it just by sliding backwards and forwards until you get like perfect feel. But on a slide like this, you have to have the ball screw attached to the cross slide first to be able to assemble it. But then you can't get any feel on the gib as you slide it backwards and forwards to try and work out how tight as it should be. So how do you guys do it? Oh wait a minute, that can't be fit far up. I think I'll tighten it up too tight until it's starting to bind. Oh yeah, which is there. And then just back it off until it feels decent. Let it go smoothly. All right, that's a milestone. It looks like a lathe again. As I pointed out in an earlier video, I need to de-pin these uh, encoder connectors to be able to get down through the ex this access hole in the bed casting. The Z axis needs the male plug de-pinned, while the X axis needs the female socket de-pinned. After I tried making three of my own pin extractors, none of which worked properly, thanks to you guys identifying that it's actually a mini Maton lock connector, I went ahead and bought the correct pin extractor. And it turned out they weren't that easy to remove. I needed three special tools, the pin extractor, this funky shaped needle to push the pin further in to seat it better before extraction. And the third special tool I needed was Hamish, my mate, the best of New Zealand avionics training. That's what it took. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> That's what it took and now it's coming apart. Thanks Hamish. No worries. Pleasure to be here. You know we're going to get 14 of them out, and then the last bust is just not going to we, come. We, we're going to get five, you're going to need to cut it off, and you've got four pins. Yeah, 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 that's true. I did buy four extra pins, so we will need five. Down. There we go. Out. Da. Oh, that's that, that easy, huh? That easy. Yeah, it was good that Hamish came around because he had the necessary feel for, for how much force and violence it needed to depin this one, which is the male connector for the Z-axis. Whereas depinning the X axis sockets, that went pretty smoothly. Well, with that, I'm out of time for this week, but pretty glad that it's looking like a lathe again. Thanks a lot for watching, and please join me next time.